This is for Jinsa and Hyunsu who like to imitate me in front of everyone. Hello class, welcome to 3.1 Introduction to the Family of Functions. It's your responsibility to watch the video and write down any important notes, formulas, equations. And as you're writing down those important notes, formulas, equations, don't forget to write your summary at the end of the session. Once you write your summary at the end of the session, don't forget to submit it on the online WISC. Thank you. All right, let's begin. We're going to be talking about Chapter 3.1, Introduction to the Family of Quadratic Functions. You guys probably had enough experience with it, so this will probably all be reviewed for you, but it's still good to make sure everyone is on the same page. So let's begin. Um, a quadratic function, the general formula is um, f of x or y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c where a, b, and c are constants, and the only restriction is that a cannot be zero. b and c can be zero, but a and b, but a cannot be zero. And so what we have here is when a is less than zero and a is greater than zero, we're going to have different shapes or looks of the, um, the shape, which is the parabola. And as you can see, when a is less than zero, I mean a is greater than zero, the graph will open up. And when a is less than zero, the graph, i.e. parabola, will open down. Important characteristics that you may remember from quadratic functions is that the domain is all real numbers. And that from last uh, week's activity, because the graph opens either up all the time or opens down all the time, then the graph is either concave up, in this case, or concave down over the entire domain. It doesn't have any inflection points because it doesn't switch. It stays either concave up or concave down. One thing also important to note is the graph is symmetric about the line x is equal to negative b over 2a. x is equal to negative b over 2a, okay, where b and a come from the general form of the quadratic function. And this isn't really symmetric, okay? Other important things to note is that the quadratic function has either a minimum of d or a maximum of d um, based off whether the graph opens up or down. As you can see in this first example, D is the lowest point um, that the graph reaches, so it has a minimum of D. Oh, sorry, right there, this point right here. And then if the graph opens downward, then it has a maximum of D oops, right here at the vertex. So um, important information you should know and are able to easily identify based off of the um, coordinates um, based off the graph ax squared plus bx plus c. Other thing is that the range, because the minimum is at d, the range will be all y values um, greater than or equal to d, as you can see. And if the graph opens down, the, the range will be all y values up until d, so less than or equal to d. So this one is all y values greater than or equal to d. And this one is all y values less than or equal to d. Okay, and let's take a look. And last thing I want to talk about are the intercepts of the parabola. Um, the parabola will have either 0, 1, or 2 x-intercepts, and that's based off um, where the graph is placed. And so in this case, in both of these examples, the graph has exactly 2 x-intercepts. And that's where the graph intersects with the um, horizontal axis, i.e. the x-axis. So what x values make the y value zero. So it can have at most two x-intercepts, and we also call them zeros of the graph or the function. And then even though we don't see where the graph crosses the y-axis here, this graph does have a y-intercept. And to be able to determine the y-intercept, we plug in zero into the equation. And eventually we'll see um, when you plug in zero into this function, the final answer is C. So the y-intercept is going to be at C, um, wherever C is in this particular situation. So here C is here, and here C is here. Okay, so that's a basic review of quadratic functions. Um, now we're going to take a look at another form of writing the quadratic function. It's factored form, and here we have slightly different variables. We still have a because a is very important, and here a cannot be zero. But then we have r and s, where r and s represent zeros of the um, quadratic function or x-intercepts of the quadratic function. So 
as I was talking about earlier, we have situations where we can have um, two x-intercepts, one x-intercept, or no x-intercepts. And the x-intercepts here are being called R and S, as you can see. And S, okay? Now, the thing I want to point out is that if the graph has no x-intercepts, then there is no way we can write the uh, formula or the quadratic function in the factored form because we don't have any factors to write it in. And the factor part of the factor form, this is a factor, for those of you who don't recall, and this is a factor. So if, our, if the graph has two x-intercepts, then we can write it in the form of a times x minus r times x minus s where R and S are the zeros of the graph or x-intercepts of the graph. If the graph only has one x-intercept, that means that R is equal to S, so we can write it in this form. Um, and really, they should have an A in front of it, so make sure it's an A in front of it. And again, if the graph cannot be written as a, uh, does not have any x-intercepts, then it cannot be written in factored form, all right? Now, of course, this leads to the question, how do I find the x-intercepts or zeros of the graph so I can write it in factored form? Well, all you're really trying to do is define s such that f of s is equal to zero, and s is um, basically a zero. Now, one such strategy is to just graph the quadratic function or look at the graph and identify where the graph crosses the x-axis. And sometimes that's a possibility, and that's always the easiest possibility. We're going to take a look at two different strategies on finding the zeros or the x-intercepts um, that are outside of graphing. One is you can write, if possible, the quadratic equation in factored form and then set each factor to zero and solve. And we're going to look at an example for that. The other option is to use the quadratic formula to solve for s. And I know you guys have a modified version of the quadratic formula that you use, but in um, AP Math, this is a quadratic formula where a, b, and c come not from the factored form, but come from the general form of the quadratic equation. And I know you guys have experience with that. And again, the plus or minus is for if we have more than one zero, which is a possibility. All right. Now, what if the graph doesn't have any zeros? But sometimes you will have to use these strategies on that type of graph, too, because sometimes they might not ask you where their x-intercepts are. They just want to know what values will the function equal, let's say, some value k? So let's say k is right here. Well, in, in actuality, that means you're trying to find this point and this point. Well, if this line k was the x-axis, then that would be the zeros of this quadratic function if this was the x-axis. So how you can do that is the strategy you can use is, let me put it you can find the zeros of a different quadratic equation. So in this case, this was f of v equals k. We're trying to figure out where v is, uh, which v values equal k. Well, we can set um, this function into a different quadratic function where we essentially be solving the x-intercepts of g, which will end up being the zeros um, of g, which will also give me the answers for the v values that make f of v equal to k, and we're going to see an example of that. And we use the same exact strategies. We can write the possible equation in factored form because um, this will be basically a translation down k units, and so you can't write it in factored form. Set each factor to zero and solve, or you can use the quadratic formula to solve for v. So the solutions to the zeros and the x-intercepts for g of v will also be the solution for f of v equals to k. Now, what if we already have the quadratic um, function graphed, and let's say we don't know what the equation is? How do we determine the equation from the graph? Well, it's to me, it's hard to write the equation in general form from the graph. It's a lot easier. Not hard as you can't do it. It just takes more work. The easiest way is to write this in um, uh, intercept form, factored form, they call it as well. So if you remember factored form, it looks like this, y equals a times x minus r times x minus s. And all we have to do is figure out what a, r, and s are. Well, from the graph, we can see that we have um, roots or zeros or x-intercepts at negative 1 and 3. So that means that I can re rewrite this factor form as x minus negative 1 times x minus 3, which is the same thing as y is equal to a 
times x plus 1 times x minus 3. But we're not done because we have to figure out what a is. And that's because we can have more than one quadratic function that has x-intercepts at uh, negative 1 and 3. I mean, there's a whole bunch that we could draw. So we want to find this particular one. And the way that you find this particular one is to pick any of these points on here. And I'm going to pick just this one, just randomly. And I'm going to substitute it into my existing function and then solve for a. So here y is negative 3 and x is 2. And then when I do that, I get that a is equal to 1. It just so happens. So now the final solution is y is equal to x plus 1 times x minus 3. And I can leave the 1 there. I can leave out the 1. All right. Now this concludes the lesson part, but I did promise you some examples. So if you want to continue watching, feel free to do so. So here I'm trying to con uh, convert this, I mean, to find the zeros of this quadratic function. And one way to do that is we said using the factored form. So what we do is we try and factor this equation. And as we can see here, um, I don't necessarily can put this totally in factored form. There's another way I can write this answer as. So I want to point out that this isn't necessarily in the factored form or intercept form of a quadratic equation because I don't know what my a is out here, and it's not x minus and x minus in each of the factors, but it does allow me to find the zeros for the solutions uh, for the x-intercepts for the graph as well. Let's take a look at an, another example where you don't always have to, um, on here you do can easily find what a is. In this case, we uh, factored out a 3 and then solved the simpler problem, and that's how we end up with our answers. So our x can be equal to negative 4, or x is equal to 3, which are zeros or x-intercepts of this graph. And this form is in the uh, factored form or x-intercept form of a quadratic equation where a is 3. And sometimes you don't have to actually um, use a factored form to be able to solve for the uh, zeros. You can actually sometimes, in this case, b is zero. So we just did some algebra to get x by itself, and we ended up with x being equal to positive or negative 4 as well. So this isn't in factored form, um, but we can you still use it to solve for x. And then the other example is using the quadratic formula, which you guys have experience with. Um, here a is 2, b is 3, and c is 1, and we just went ahead and substituted values into the quadratic formula and ended up with our solution here, which is negative 1 half and negative 1. Over here we have um, another problem uh, where a is 1, b is negative 1, c is negative 1, and instead of getting lovely whole numbers or fractions as we did here, but the solutions for the um, x-intercepts are zeros here, or 1 plus or minus square root of 5 over 2. Okay, I think that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.